Hello and welcome to my Binchotan Charcoal Grill Buyer's Guide. I am not an expert of Binchotan Charcoal Grilling, but it's something that I do and it's something that I enjoy and it is something that I am going to pass along to you, the viewer, my vast wealth of knowledge that I have accumulated over the last year. I'll put links below of what you should buy, so maybe you don't even need to watch the video, you can just click the links and buy it all. I like to cook all sorts of things on my Binchotan charcoal grill. I like to cook chicken. I like to cook steak. I like to cook vegetables. I like to cook shrimp. I like to cook fish. I like to cook anything you can think of, throw on the grill and cook it. It's going to be made delicious because of the science behind this grill, which I am regurgitating what I've uh, seen on other YouTube videos. But the Binchotan charcoal, which we have right here, many generations of families have passed down their knowledge on how to make this charcoal from a specific tree, from a specific region in Japan that burns very, very hot and it'll burn for a very long time compared to a briquette from America that might burn for whatever, an hour. This will burn for five hours. Another benefit is that when you cook food and the fat from the food drips onto the charcoal, it emits a smoke that instantly flavors your food with its own smoky juices. And that gives anything that you cook on here an instant flavoring. Another benefit is that the radiation from this charcoal ensures that the food gets like grilled and kind of crispy but it stays juicy inside. Now my grill is, you can see it's, a lot of fat has dripped down on it and it is uh, quite frankly kind of gross. Uh, that's all animal fat uh, along the sides. I've tried to clean it up. It doesn't really clean up. It doesn't smell or anything. I'm not gonna worry about it. I learned of Binchotan charcoal from the show Japanese Style Originator, which was on Netflix. Um, But the show is basically about the people and the culture of Japan, uh, a lot of the foods that Japanese people eat and enjoy and have spread across the world and now we all enjoy that food. One of those segments included a guy that went into a mine and he had a, a, an ax of some sort and he went deep into this mine and carved out of the wall a cube and then he took that cube home and then he dug out the middle of it and then he stuck in a little oven heated up that cube and then we learned that he was actually making one of these diatomaceous earth grills and I said you know what I want one of those I want to own one and I looked on Amazon and there was one available for hundred dollars and I immediately bought it and then I looked on Google which is a website I like to use and I googled what to put in my diatomaceous earth grill and it said binchotan charcoal so then I went on Amazon and I got a three pound bag of binchotan charcoal, which cost like $60. And I said, oh no, how do I ignite this? We were at Super H Mart and I saw this little gas uh, stove, uh, which is fueled by these butane fuel containers. But then I said, what do I put the charcoal in? So I looked online and I got this little pot that has holes in the bottom. And I took this pot and I put the charcoal in the pot and then I put that on the stove and then that ignites the charcoal. Now this is Kishu Binchotan Hanmaru. This is some charcoal that I got from Corin.com and there is a shortage of Binchotan charcoal so I had to order 33 pounds of the charcoal uh, and it, it was kind of expensive but hey, the best things in life are worth paying for. Hey, buddy, what's wrong, man? Mm -hmm. Mama's downstairs, man. Yeah. What do you want? Do you want some juice? It's my son, Noah. He's 18 months old. I love him dearly. You should have a kid. Having a child is the most amazing thing. Uh, it truly allows you to love in ways that you didn't know was possible. 
Um, also, the reason that we're on this planet is uh, two things. We're here to discover and we're here to love. And a child, you're constantly discovering love. I realized I had no way to get my hot charcoals into the grill. So then I bought these tongs, which are great tongs. You could probably get these anywhere. But then, ah, it's hard to do this, but you could take your charcoal that's very hot and then place it in your grill. I'm gonna put them down right now. Now this is a fan that I got on the internet uh, that does the job. It's made of wood and paper and it has, uh, it's getting kind of dirty. But you do that and then the air blows in these little holes and circulates and then the coals get hotter and uh, that's really how you get the fire going. Now this is my old fan. This is from the Owl Cafe Owl Village and I was using this fan for a while, a souvenir. Uh, but eventually the little stick broke off. But this fan has served me well and I wonder how all those owls are doing right now. <laughs> Another tool I like to use when I'm actually grilling these little uh, yaki niku tongs. When our food is done and our meal is over, uh, you take your charcoal and put it into this pot here. And then you put the lid on, and then the charcoal's cooled down, and you could use them again next time. Stuff is gonna accumulate on your mesh, and you need to take care of that, because you can't let it build up. Because, uh, too, I think it builds up. I think these could technically, as it builds up, become carcinogenic. I could be talking out of my asshole, uh, but I think they could become carcinogenic. So you want to make sure you get a good uh, metallic br uh, sponge, and then you just want to take your sponge and scrub that shit off. Finally, I just want to say that this is a ritual. This is not just food preparation. Uh, this is something meditative and will enhance your life in every way, so don't be afraid to invest in it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Like and subscribe. Thank you.